Hey guys, this is Sam Pierce, and uh, thank you for watching what will be the first and uh, what I plan to be the normal format of these videos. And uh, first off, I want to apologize for this week's video being kind of late. I had a busy couple days and I didn't get a chance to, to film until a lot later than I intended to. But um, this week I want to talk about our choices of uh, entertainment, which I know is kind of a touchy subject for a lot of people. It used to be for me too because I knew that sometimes I was watching stuff that shouldn't have been. Um, we don't realize a lot of the times how big of an impact the movies we watch, the books we read, well, for the people who still read, but anyway, um, and the music we listen to have on us. Um, and actually, when I, um, my first semester in college, our, um, I took a psychology class, it's just an intro class, and our, the, one of the first things that our professor told us um, was that well, she was talking about music in particular, but it, it applies to all kinds of media. That um, the, one of the biggest causes of depression that she ran into was um, the music that people listen to, particularly with teenagers. Because she had uh, one person in particular that she told us about who um, talked about having suicidal thoughts, and she had you know, a good life, and you know, everything else was normal, and when finally she could understand why she kept thinking about this, and um, the first thing that uh, my professor, who was practicing at the time, uh, told her uh, was to bring in her music collection, let her take a look at it, and you know, she was listening to all this uh, this music about death and suicide and how horrible life was and couldn't figure out why she was having suicidal thoughts even if we think even if we don't necessarily agree with the points that um, the movies that we watch or um, music we listen to makes it's still in there it still gets in your head and um, in fact in Philippians 4 uh, 8 through 9 uh, Paul writes Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Now, I'd heard that verse over and over in my life, um, and I always thought of it as, you know, hey, okay, that's great, that's a good idea, um, I should do that, and never really putting any thought into how to practice that, and it wasn't until a few months ago I started, well, no, I take that back, there was a, f a couple times in the last few years where I've had to go through and look at, particularly my movie collection, and check and see, there's stuff in here that I, you know, really didn't have any business watching, it's not so much the things that are overtly bad, you know, heavy language, nudity, things like that, but is some, I found this with video games mostly, I used to be a huge gamer and I had to cut back on it a lot over the last few months because it was, it was pointed out to me that even though something may not be inherently bad, it can be used as just an enormous waste of time, you know, it's, it's fun, it's rewarding to do at the time, but it doesn't accomplish anything in the real world. And a lot of the times, I know in my case, I didn't realize this until I got out of it, but I was using it almost as a mental sedative. I was taking, uh, yeah, see, taking, I was playing games to avoid having to think about real life. And um, it's, that's a dangerous thing to do because I wasted so many years that I could have been doing something important uh, and, and not anything huge but um, more important than moving pixels around on a screen sure but um, going back to the verse in Philippians what really stood out to me reading that was the word pure it, it just it just popped out to me and I did a little digging into it and uh, into the original Greek words that are used there and Actually, the first one that I found was a mistake. It's not the word for pure that's used there, but it's used uh, in other places. But I think it has really awesome meaning. It's I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, I'm sure, because my Greek's a little rusty. But uh, elecrines, elecrines, um, 
is the closest I can get to it. And one of the meanings for it is unalloyed. You know, when you think of a, an alloy, you think of metal. It's two different metals, or two different elements, I mean, that have been blended together. And in that case, you know, for if we use them for building uh, materials or whatever, it makes them stronger, you know, lighter, cheaper, uh, usually the motivation there. But it's still, it's a blend of two different things. Now, if one of those uh, elements uh, is weak, it's going to make the whole thing weak. And for something to be pure, we can't, that word there, I think, is intended for our being, our character. It can't be blended with something else. We have to be completely and wholly devoted to God and, and to doing his will. And another uh, kind of meaning for that particular word is judged by sunlight. There's no, there's no darkness in it. Everything is just laid bare, and you can see that it's pure. Although, like I said, that's not the word that's used in Philippians. The word that's used there actually means chaste, like, um, uh, like we think of like a, this is kind of an old example, but like a chastity belt. You um, undefiled, you know, is the 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 core principle there. Something that was made pure and whole that hasn't been corrupted by anything and that's that was one of the things that I uh, the problems I had with a lot of the media that I used to uh, uh, watch and, and read it wasn't so much that it was all bad it was there was a good there was good stuff in there but there was a little tinge of like say there was a situation that was a little iffy on one small part of it and I tried to tell myself, you know, you can overlook that, that's no big deal, just concentrate on the rest of it. But it's still there, you know, it still gets into your mind. So we, what we need to do is avoid all of that, you know, and like I said, not just the things that are overtly bad and have things, have scenes and situations in them that we know are wrong. Also the stuff that is just pointless. I mean, I'm not saying completely cut out uh, everything that um, that is just a pure entertainment because once in a while occasionally you need that but you can't let it become an everyday all the time thing um, but just I want to challenge you to take a look at what you're reading and watching and listening to and make sure that that it lines up with with what you need with you know what you need to be looking at and it was it was put to me like this at a, a conference I was at a couple weeks or sorry a couple months ago. Whether this is something that you feel like you can get away with or not, is it worth the possibility that it could interfere interfere with your relationship with God? Is it worth messing up the what should be the single most important thing in your life? And I, and I think for almost anything, it, the answer would be no. If it doesn't help that relationship along. There's no need for it. Just cut it loose. Um, but my recommendation this week, and honestly, this, this whole topic I've been talking about, this is the reason that I wanted to put this section in, or I make a, um, a recommendation of like a book, or song. last week it was a song, or a movie, was so that we have more options. When I first started trying to clean up what I was watching, reading, looking at, I didn't feel like I had many options. Like most of the, especially movies, you know, mainstream, big budget movies that are, and I hate to say it this way, that are good, are well made, you know, they aren't faith based. Uh, there are a lot of uh, movies that are made by Christian organizations that are, the informative ones are, are great, but they're ones that are made for entertainment and they aren't always necessarily that well made. And I, I hate to say that. But, like I said, I didn't feel like there were many options uh, for anything good. So I want to kind of find those things that are good and give them a little more exposure and get them out there. And this week, I have a, a novel that a friend of mine gave me several years ago, and I didn't get around to reading until recently. It's uh, it's called Fishers of Men by Gerald N. Lund. It's part of, it's the first book of the Kingdom and the Crown series. It's a historical fiction but it's really, really well researched. Um, it's about 
uh, Jesus' ministry in and around Galilee, um, told through the eyes of people who were at, uh, well, according, you know, this is where the fiction comes in. He's built in characters that were at several of his uh, sermons and witnessed his miracles, and it gives really great insight to how the people of that time would have thought about what he was doing and how it would have impacted them. It gives you great, great context for reading the Gospels. Um, actually, i got my copy of the book over here. Um, if you can get a hold of this and check it out, it's a really, really interesting book. And at the end, let me see if I can find one. At the end of each chapter, there's a little section. I don't know if I can pick this up. Okay. Well, you can see uh, down here and over here, it gives a section of notes on things that were mentioned in that chapter that might be um, a little controversial for some people or may just be things about Jewish culture that we don't ordinarily uh, know a lot about or recognize. It's a really, really cool way of doing a historical novel. And I would urge anybody who's looking for uh, something for a very long read, it's got quite a, bit of pages, uh, quite a few pages on it, but it's a good, really good book, really interesting. But, um, all right, I'll, hopefully next week's video will be up on time, and I hope to see you guys then. I'm, once again, this is Sam Pierce. I'm one simple man, but I serve an awesome God.